always. Good evening, Thursday. Let me count. Brad, what are we up to? July 27th. And we're here with an exciting show. I mean, I'm just, I'm excited because I grew up here and I know it. And nobody knows more about the history of this area than Ray Smith. Uh, uh, Everywhere he goes, everything he does, if you ever follow him, please do. I mean, Twitter, wherever you got to go, I don't know all the details we'll get him from him. But everybody, a lot of you here in this area have already been to the movie Oppenheimer. And if you don't, haven't been, you need to go. For no other reason than you need to know your history of your area. And the movie didn't have much to deal with Oak Ridge, but... It it, it 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 was great. I mean, having had a father who got here in 43 and, and done so much and so many friends, and I just, it, it, it's all about what why that area was so special, the father's time. Welcome, Ray. Thank you. I'm Tell, glad to be here. Oh, we're glad to have you. Tell me a little bit about where you grew up, how you got involved in Oak Ridge. I grew up in Middle Tennessee. Okay. A little well, place called Delina. All right, have you? Paul Murfreesboro. All right, you understand. Uh, Little Crossroads Community. Yes, now, I've written a book about the history of Delina. It's a bestseller. All 25 people <laughs> that, that live there have bought copies All the realtors got some. All right, all right. And I grew up and went to school in Petersburg, married my high school sweetheart, Petersburg, Fanny. Tennessee? Petersburg, I ain't heard Tennessee. of that. I heard of the one. I yeah, it's right between Lewisburg and Federal. Okay, you're out there a little ways. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're in more south west. of Nashville, about 50 miles south yeah. of Nashville. Down towards McMinnville and all that. Yeah, right. that's yeah. right. All right. But I, uh, I grew up there, married Fanny, right out of high school. Okay. And then we, they tried to draft me. Into the army, Lord have okay, mercy. and I, I was. Did you get a good now number? remember, I'm, I'm a, a product of a change of life mother. They had raised three children, and then 15 years later, here comes Ray. <laughs> well, that's got to be from God. There's no other <laughs> yeah, way to explain that. I was not that's planned like, uh, for. That's, that's for sure. That's like John the Baptist. So, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. But at any rate, they sent me a draft notice, and I, I was taking care of my parents, taking care of Fanny's parents. She was born to the late mothers as well. Right. And so I didn't know what I was going to do. I went and found the Air Force would give me a six-month delayed enlistment. Well, that's I took smart, it. And smart. six months, I got everything taken care of, went in the Air Force, uh, spent a year in Vietnam. What year was this, by the way? In 68 and 69 right. in Vietnam, right after the Tet Offensive. Yeah, that was a big offensive. Yeah, and I, and I was in the, I was a radio relay technician. I could have gone anywhere in the world out of Vietnam for one year, mm-hmm. and then I was going to be stationed at Thule, Greenland, and other remote sure. locations. I had a wife and a kid. Sure. I couldn't do that. So no. we got out of the Air Force. We uh, applied for work, or I applied for work in Tullahoma, Tennessee, sure, Huntsville, Wintel, Alabama, sure. and Oak Ridge. Okay. Y-12 called me first, okay. so I came beating a trail to Oak Ridge. Got Young here. man, though, still 20, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got here on September the 14th, 1970. Okay. And uh, hired on at Y-12, and then I spent 47 years working Ooh, at Y-12. 2017, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Had a good career there. What would you do? Uh, you I started out as an electrician, an electronic technician, and uh, worked my way up to the associate director for the facilities management organization. Okay. Maintaining the entire site. Now we're government-owned, contractor-operated facility. Okay, and they change contractors periodically. Every five, seven yeah, years. When yeah, when they do that, those of us that work in there, we call ourselves weebies. <laughs> we'd be here before you came. We'll yeah. be here when you're gone. Yeah. But in 2000, they did something never been done before. They brought in a hundred people, replaced the entire top of the organization. So I lost my position. Right. The first thing they had to do was to find 800 buildings and document the condition of those buildings. Well, it made us mad, so we weren't being very helpful. (laughs) They called a meeting, figure out what to do, and I went to their meeting, held up my hand, and I said, look, I know where all 800 of them are. I'll find them for you. So they let me do the due diligence study to find the buildings. Mm -hmm. And then in a few months, they got some money from The reservation has 800 buildings? 800 buildings there at the time. Now, this is in in 2000. I got you. And then they they got some money to tear down old Manhattan project structures that wouldn't be needed and wouldn't be used. And bless their hearts, they didn't know which buildings to tear down, which ones to keep. Sure. So they called another meeting. <laughs> I went to that meeting, and I held up my hand again. <laughs> yeah. I said, look, I'll make you a list of buildings you can tear down, won't be needed now, won't be needed in the future. Whole pump houses, wooden structures, that sure. sort of stuff. And I did. And we've, we've torn down over 300 buildings out there since then. Yeah. And for about three years, I helped them tear those buildings down. Mm-hmm. Then I went to them, and I said, you know, you're losing a lot of history when you tear these buildings mm-hmm. down. 
Yeah, they'd figured me out by then, so they said, okay, Ray, what is it you want to do about that? I said, I'll be your historian until I retire. Wow. They agreed to that, built that history center out there to New Hope Center, yeah. let me make documentary films about the uh, history of Y-12. And you, you remember, after the Cold War ended, there was a time here where there was talk about moving Y-12 out to Nevada. Yep. And we didn't want to lose it. So at that point, we began to be a little more concerned about our public image. Yeah. So me going out and making presentations about the history of Oak Ridge and of Y-12 might have helped a sure little bit. Did. Sure did. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun. And then in 2015, I got appointed. Now, you and I talked about Bill Wilcox a little yes. bit ago. Yeah. Bill, good friend of mine. Yeah. He was the first historian for yes. the city of Oak Ridge. Yes, he was. And he passed away in 2013 right. and then in 2015 they asked me to be the historian for the city and okay. i've been the historian ever since what does that mean it means i'd give tours and i do whatever it is that uh, pertains to the that that the city would like pertaining to our history mm -hmm. and then in i also in 2017 got appointed to the tennessee historical commission so i'm a oh, commissioner yeah. on sure. the governor's historical yeah. commission well deserved well. well deserved yeah all right so if we move into it Mm -hmm. And you've been here a long time. If you move yep. into it, see, my father came to Ornell in 43. I, I was leaving in 73, so we kind of overlapped. I came back in, uh, I was, uh, I came back in 94, so I was up north for a while. So, but it's just so much history in those well, days. Well, you didn't lose a bit of your accent. Well, it's funny. When I go up there, <laughs> when, you I, can pick when I up. go up there, no, when I go up there, they say, I sound like Tennessee. First thing I'm here, I go into a grocery store. I go into a food station down this road from my office there. Yeah. I had a building up there. And I said, can I get a uh, fish sandwich? Can you put that in a Can you put that in a sack? They looked around <laughs> for about 20 minutes. They and he says, what the heck's a sack? <laughs> and I said, a bag. I'm sorry. So, yeah, yeah. But when I came back, everybody, said a poke. I always talk fast. <laughs> yeah, I always talk fast. So, I mean, when I came back, they said, well, you too much Yankee now. So, well, my parents were Yankees, you know, Manhattan Project and all yeah. that. We didn't, anyway, get, I didn't get lucky enough. But yeah. anyway. We've been here for a while. We have been here for a while. Mm. All right. Big movie out. Oh, my. Absolutely. That's what the theme of the show is, is that we're, we're talking about, what's the pronounced? Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Some people say uh, different names, but Oppenheimer's yeah. the correct yeah. pronunciation. Yeah. I, I, I will say right off of the bat, if I have any kind of skill, psycho history was big in the 70s, and I got into it in graduate school a bit. It's where you take a historical character, whether it's Mussolini or Roosevelt, and you study their upbringing and try to figure out what psychologically motivates them. There ain't nobody more complicated than this guy. <laughs> uh, Oppenheimer's very complicated character. Grew very up, grew up. Very wealthy. Not wealthy. He had Van Gogh's in his living room. His mother was an artist, and his dad was a, a textile importer. Yeah. They moved from Europe, and uh, they were just very, very wealthy. He got a yacht for his 16th birthday, a small little boat. And <laughs> so he was happy in New York, but he was a lonely child. He, he stayed did. home most of the time. Was he an did introvert. have a he'd had a tough childhood, yep. very much alone. Yep. Did not fit in with his peers no. at all. Was not well accepted. And the fact that he was smarter than anybody around him didn't help. No, that doesn't because, help. And when you're introverted, and, and, and they especially think you're, when you're smarter than everybody around, and you don't mind telling them you're smart. Yeah, he, he, he could do that. He had a little he better. That. He had a little better than that because that's yeah. all he had. He didn't have the relationships or the that's communications. Right. Absolutely. So he goes to high school, um, mm -hmm. raised in a Jewish family, but not right. practicing. So they sent him to a secular school. Right. He gets his stuff. He gets way ahead in his classes. Yep. Just he's brilliant. So he goes off and he gets his degrees and Harvard and all the rest. But then he ends up, we'll jump forward to Cambridge, and he starts to have real psychological issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. And, he and had a tough time over there. Depression. What we would yeah. call clinical depression it probably was, today. Yeah. yeah. And he just couldn't handle it. He, he yeah. made some mistakes. He did some things. So yeah. finally, he goes to Germany and gets it all together. He does. Uh, yeah. he, he does uh, really well. But when Borsch he gets helped over him. There. Yeah. Yeah. Actually meets Werner Heisenberg. Yeah. And so they know one another. Yeah, he's the head of the Nazi. Yeah, that's all. That's what he was going to be. Yeah. When Neil Bush was there too, teaching wasn't he? Yeah, yeah he was. He, did. he was he the met, big theoretical physicist. That's physicist. right. He he met him as well. This is brand new, though. This is <laughs> this kind of science was brand new, wasn't it? You're right. It was uh, this theoretical uh, physics was not being done in the United States at all. That's mm -hmm. why he went to Europe yeah. is to get on the front end of that. And then the reason he came back to the states was to introduce it into the United sure. States. And enjoyed his time in Berkeley in the late 30s, oh, yeah. taught, had yeah. great students. Yeah. And, and, and he was and new. You had to go there to get some information. He was publishing, publishing information and, and really was becoming 
uh, one of the uh, elite scientists in the theoretical field. I told my son, you don't realize how young he was. Oh, <laughs> five, oh, four, I'm sorry. You know, you're talking about teaching at 23 and yeah. 24. He yeah. was the father of Tom Baum, Los Alamos. You're in your late 30s. I know it. I mean, he it's was amazing. Quite young. Yeah. It's amazing how. Mm -hmm. But you know, Oak Ridge's were too. Well, they were. Actually, yeah, I mean, a lot of people come in here. Uh, average age in Oak Ridge during the Manhattan Project was 27. It's 25 in Los Alamos. That's well, good. Same thing. Same, same thing. Pretty close, yeah. yeah. That's great. My dad told me that they had to go out and hire a funeral director because nobody died. <laughs> nobody would build a home. They were all so there young. You had there to one one every two yeah, months. Yeah, you know? that's right. And, 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 early on, we didn't have a funeral. That's right. In that's Oak what Ridge. he was telling me. They yeah. had to go to Clinton or somewhere, somewhere else. And yeah. they tried to get it. I think they finally got somebody. Even, you know when they had that? Uh, train wreck up at Jellicoe. I don't remember and, that. Well, that was in 42, yeah, 44. Yeah, I've seen that on the History yeah, Museum. And, and they brought the uh, wounded and the dead, and they, they had to figure out where to put these dead because there were so many. It's like 100 and something. Well, right? 100 injured, 30 of them, I okay, think. Okay, right. But that's a lot. But they had to use all of the funeral homes around the area. They didn't have one in Oak Ridge. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, so... Back to Oppenheimer. Let's stay on Oppenheimer. <laughs> we'll, we'll diverge. That's what we do. But let's, let's talk about Oppenheimer. All right. Um, so Groves made the decision to hire him against everybody's advice. He did. And, uh, and advice. Groves. Don't do it. He's crazy. He's well, like, Groves needed somebody that, that was smart and knew how to do what needed to be done. But he also saw some ambition. I think so. I think he did. And then... Uh, He's a good talker. Uh, and in the in the movie Oppenheimer, they do a good job, I believe. Now, Christopher Nolan is an outstanding producer of movies, so anything he does, I expect yeah. to be good, and I believe this is one of his best. But they portray that well, that interaction between Groves and Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. And I think it was an important part of, uh, of Groves' decision to put him in place. I, I think Groves, I read what Groves in one of his memoirs said, I knew he, other scientists would gravitate towards him. Yeah. And they had to have help. Yeah, they did. And and, and he could attract those other top-notch scientists. Yeah, because of his and, reputation. And, and he could talk so. to them, yeah. Yeah, and I think he brought and them. And Gross knew he couldn't. They wouldn't pay any attention to him. People don't realize these were little cities. I mean, movie <laughs> theaters. They went That's up right. in a year. Yeah. And you look at those movies, and they were, mm -hmm. they were producing... Ten babies a month, so they had their families out there. <laughs> yeah. They had sure little churches set up. They had everything. Yeah, they, well, they knew if they were going to attract these scientists, they had to provide. Come on. Uh, uh, Groves actually the hired Alden Blankenship mm -hmm. here in Oak Ridge and told him, build the best school systems in the nation. Pay them the salaries they would get if they were working in New York City. Mm -hmm. And we still have Blankenship Field today Name because that of that man. That's yeah. right. He did an outstanding job putting schools in. Had three of them going by October of 43. Wow. And uh, he involved the teachers and the principals in such a way that the schools were the top-notch schools. Oak Ridge is still a good school. Best in some of the best in the yeah. nation. So well, we've we got a little background. Tradition. We'll take a break and come back, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about Los Alamos and Oak Ridge and the roles they play. All right. Okay, let's go. Daniel Forrester has been recognized as one of East Tennessee's leading attorneys for nearly two decades. Civil disputes, criminal defense, divorces, and juvenile custody cases are all part of an impressive resume. Daniel's legal experience also includes representing clients in local, state, and federal courts. A husband and a father, Daniel is a Rule 31 certified mediator who has represented hundreds of families in Chancery Court. Call Daniel Forrester Law Office at 865-457-7900 for a free consultation. From Oak Ridge, Tennessee, IB3 Global Solutions conducts operations around the world to enhance the U.S. national security posture and minimize radiological and nuclear threats. IB3 Global Solutions. Mission first. Fan Gear Barn is Oak Ridge's source for new and vintage sports fan gear from around the world of sports. Find your favorite team gear at Fan Gear Barn, located at 977 Oak Ridge Turnpike, across from the hospital. Open 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., six days a week. Closed on Sundays. At Navarro, we partner with our clients to advance clean energy and deliver effective solutions for complex challenges in the nuclear and environmental fields. When should you get tested for COVID-19? You have symptoms of COVID-19, such as runny nose, congestion, sore throat, fever, cough, shortness of breath, muscle pain, headache, chills, or loss of taste or smell. 
Current testing recommendations say everyone should get tested immediately if they have symptoms of COVID-19. If you have symptoms, be sure to follow recommendations about how long to stay home and away from others. For more information, visit our If You Are Sick or Test Positive webpage. All right, crew, let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Welcome back to Between the Lines. We're talking to Ray Smith, and we're doing history on Oppenheimer and this well, all of the Manhattan Project. So we go back to 1939, and Germany reproduces fission or produces yeah, fission, whatever the word the is. First time, yeah. But, they so split oh, them. we're all now the Nazis. You know, Germany's well, got this. We're now we're scared. The whole, the whole world knew about it. I mean, all the scientists understood uh, this is a major, major event, and it releases a huge amount of energy. Mm -hmm. So. It that was common much, knowledge. Was it did, Was other people besides the Germans trying to do the neutron collision and all that? Were they uh, trying to get it? We I, weren't not, in the United States. Yeah, I'm not sure how much research was actually going on. But when that happened, then everybody wanted to try it. Got all to. of the scientists did. Got to. And uh, and they they begin thinking about how how you know what can you do with this and how can how can it be done in a large scale? Mm -hmm. Remember. They recognize that uranium-235 is what you needed. Right. But in uranium ore, in a thousand pounds of uranium ore, there's only seven pounds of 235. You get 238 in larger quantities. That's points. right. That's and, and to get that 235 was most difficult. Now, they begin to realize that you were going to need a lot of it. In other words, you're going to have to separate a lot to get it. And that's why Great Britain came to the United States and said, look, we know that you can make a, a, a bomb out of 235, but you've got to get it. You've got to separate it. We don't have the resources to do that. You make the bomb, and we'll send our scientists over to help. And that's what they did. Some huh. of the scientists came over and went to Los Alamos. And uh, uh, one of the scientists that came over was Klaus Fuchs. Yeah, Now, famous. Klaus Fuchs is the spy that stole yeah. the plans to Fat Man, gave them to Stalin before we ever used the bomb. Well, it's amazing. Now, we had a spy here he was in Oak Ridge. Klaus Fuchs was at Los Alamos. Los Alamos. Had the glasses. Gone in. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, I don't like him. And we had one here. George Koval was really? here in Oak Ridge. And uh, I'm convinced that he told Stalin that it's real hard to make the uranium, and you'd be smarter to go with the plutonium. Now, he also had the plans of the plutonium bomb. So what Stalin did is he said, replicate that bomb. Don't change anything. Make it just like they did. And that's what his first uh, explosion in 49 was. Was a plutonium another, bomb. Yeah, plutonium bomb. Sure was. Where did this Clovel guy come from? Uh, he, uh, he actually was an American citizen. He yeah. was born in Iowa. But when he was young, his family went back to Russia. Mm -hmm. And he was recruited over there. Uh, and then he came in. <laughs> the way he got into the States is pretty funny. He got in. He rode a ship over here. And he got to be friends with the captain of the ship. And when they got off out in California, he walked in with the captain of the ship and never went through customs. So that's how he snuck God. in. But then eventually he worked here in Oak Ridge. And then he, he went had up. a science background? Uh, he was a health physicist. Okay. And when he went up to, he went up to Dayton where they made the uh, polonium initiator for the bomb. So he had a pretty good knowledge. And the story goes that he had access to more of Oak Ridge than normally people did. Mostly in Oak Ridge, you only went to the place you worked, that's and that's right. all. And you went home. So when I say George Koval had more access, people question that because yeah. not many people did. But now maybe him being in the health physics field might have Moved might have allowed that. But at any rate, he was here. There's a book been written about him. It's, it's called The Sleeper Agent by Ann Hagedorn. 
And we had Ann here uh, a year or so ago speaking at our lunch for literacy and uh, talking about that book. She done, did a good job. Did she, she came here at Oak Ridge and did a lot of good research. So, so where did he end up? Was, uh, he went back to Russia oh, yeah. and got Quit. little recognition until he died. And Putin gave him the highest civilian award just a few years ago wow. after he had died. Hmm. Very so there were spies in both places. So let's go back to let's go back to Los Alamos and yeah. let's go back to. I see they're out there in forty two getting things organized. Oak Ridge is already being built. Uh, yeah, Oak and forty three right? now is when they went into Los Alamos. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So forty two, we're working over here. Yeah, from November forty two, actually twenty second of November, they started building the administration building in forty two. Up on the hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what they call the castle on the yeah, hill. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's what I. Hey, and then now, now Groves is the one that made the decision. They'd been looking at this place all summer in '42. Right. They've been talking to TVA. Been talking about you know getting sure. electricity and that sort of stuff. But nobody would make the final decision. Well, Groves. I mean, the day he got appointed, he came down here. He quit. Left a meeting up there to come early. And came down here, stayed in the Andrew Johnson Hotel in Knoxville, drove out here and saw the place the next day, said bye. So he just sides. took care of it that way. And then in he didn't need an exploratory committee. Yeah, that's right, he didn't. <laughs> in February, February the 1st, they broke ground at uh, Y-12. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think on the 2nd, they broke ground at X-10, the graphite reactor. And on the 18th, they started building... Alpha One, the first Calutron building, right. and then in June they started uh, K25. So think about that: all of that construction, three large Rick. plants going on, and building the city at the same time. Don't you know this years. place was a buzz with a lot wow. of activity? My father still talks about the JCs and the dances, yeah. and you yeah. see the signs of the court. They were going. Fast. They, they got up to seventy thousand hey, people. This place was open twenty-four hours a day during be. that time. Can't build that fast yeah. if you don't. You're right. Seventy-five thousand people by August. Of 1945. Wow. And uh, sitting out, think about this 75,000 people living here, 80,000 people working at the plants, coming in from various locations around Oak Ridge. Had the ninth largest bus system in the nation, 850 buses. Right. <laughs> oh, it had to be amazing. I have to tell you a story about old Lester Fox. Well, Lester, I want to hear you Lester, like Lester, yeah. yeah, he and his brother saw a good opportunity. They bought a hundred buses, and they made a part of the bus system. Yeah. And he said those buses broke down every day. So one day he was over in Clinton with a wrecker, and he had a bus behind his wrecker. He saw another one of them broke down. So he just pulled off right in front of it, tied that second one on with a log chain, put him a driver in it, pulled out on the road. <laughs> Policeman stopped him and said, Lester, you can't do that. Leave one of those buses and come back and get it. Besides, I want you to meet me in the courthouse at 8.30 on Monday morning. Now, Lester worried all weekend about what's going to happen to him, but he went. When he went in there at 8.30, there that policeman was in the hallway. He said, Lester, come with me. Took him down to the clerk's office and said, give this boy a driver's license. <laughs> Lester was 14 oh, years yeah. old when he got his driver's license. And that's license. right over there where McDonald's is. <laughs> yeah. where the, the uh, where, Well, where the old city court was 10, 15 yeah. years ago. Underneath there's the that's jail right. and everything. That's, that's where it time. is. That's right. So we go to Los Alamos. We've got Nichols here. We've Groves has got... Uh, Obviously, he had Nichols to begin with. That's why they got started. Yeah, yeah military, absolutely. Nich Nichols ran the Manhattan Project with the exception of Los Alamos from right here in Oak Ridge, mm -hmm. in the administration building. Was he a scientist? Background? Or just military? Just military. Administrative type yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's a the uranium process of, of, of we did here com yeah. bombarding neutrons and no, that was already an accepted way to do business no no we separated the uranium 235 right. okay that we didn't do any of the cre of the criticality the That's reactivity all that was out there yeah. but anyway we did that separation of uranium and we also built the X-10 graphite reactor to prove that you could produce plutonium in a uranium reactor. Then they went out to Hanford, Washington, and they built those reactors along the Columbia River, and that's where that's where the uranium came from for, uh, I'm sorry, the plutonium came from for the gadget and for Fat Man. The uranium for Little Boy came from Oak Ridge. Was one bomb ready before the other? Uh, they had, hmm, that's a good question. They had the uranium in June of 45, they made a, a, 
a huge effort to empty all of the calutrons at Y-12. Calutron stands for California University Cyclotron, invented by Ernest Lawrence. Yes. And that was the last stage of getting this U-235 to go out to Los Alamos. Right. They had built S-50, the thermal diffusion plant. They had built K-25, the gaseous diffusion. By March of 1945, that was being fed into the beta calutrons at Y-12, and then they were finishing up. So in June, they said, clean it all out and send it out to us. Mm -hmm. And you know how it was transported out there? They put it in small gold lined coffee cup sized containers, put two of them in a briefcase, strapped it to an Army lieutenant's arm, dressed him up to look like a salesman, put him on a passenger train up through Chicago, and they picked it up up there, another group did, and took it out to Los Alamos. That's how the uranium for y, from Y-12 got transported out wow. to Los Alamos. That's the big marbles that kept getting dropped yeah, in Yeah, they got kept in their own Oppenheimer's yeah, movie. But now that, that was happening in June. And about that same time, they were working the plutonium. But now the plutonium could be produced faster than the uranium could. All right, so... The separation and, process. Uh, yeah, in fact, longer, it's, yeah. Not, it's not a separation process for plutonium. No, but I meant the uranium. But the uranium longer. separation took longer, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think they the were both coming down. Plutonium is rarer than uranium, is it not? Well, plutonium has to be created. There's not but just barely any at all in yeah. nature. Most of it, in fact, all of it, was created in uranium reactors. And the uranium-238 turns into plutonium-239 in, in, uh, in that reactor process. I and see. then the chemical separation cool process purifies it and gets it out mm -hmm. and sends it. they send it down to... Uh, uh, to Los Alamos. So they were did, getting did, it there at about the same time. Okay, well, we got another break. Tell me, define gaseous diffusion. Uh, K-25, that's, that's all I know. All right, gaseous diffusion in the barrier, in a space the size of my thumbnail, you've got a billion holes. Okay. All the same size, equally spaced. That uranium-235 will go through those holes just a little faster. Remember, it's three neutrons lighter. Right. A little faster than the 238. Right. If you do that 3,000 times, you're going to begin to build up a higher percentage of 235. Wow. That's how gaseous diffusion works. So it goes the whole through point as uranium was to increase the 235. Yeah, and that was it. And they call that enriching the 235. Sure, enrichment. Enrichment. And the Y-12, they call that separating. Now, I'm going to tell you how Calutron works, just so you've yeah, got we, all this. We all got to know, because we don't know. Yeah, we got time to do it now. Yeah, absolutely. No, let's do it right now. All right, here we go. Imagine with me if I had two rubber bands hanging down from my hand. I put a golf ball on one okay. and a ping pong ball on the other. Then I held it to my side, and I spun it real quick for half a turn. That golf ball would stretch that rubber band further than the ping pong ball. Correct. So I'd get two arcs. Same thing happens with uranium-235 and 238. There's three neutrons difference in the mass. So when you put them in between those big magnets and that magnet causes it to bend, centrifugal force will make the 238 make a slightly larger arc than the 235. So you can catch that 235 up at the top. Next. No moving parts. That's just how it works. And that's the picture we all see in our books with the ladies sitting at the... Uh, sitting at the k at the table. Yeah, they, what did they do? Operating. Just watch They it. turned the knob to keep the meter on a certain point. Right. They let it go to a control point and bring it back. That was their job, to keep that to meter on a certain yeah. point. When Gladys Owens came here, she was the first... Calutron girl that I knew. Yeah. By the way, that that's not what they called them during the day. They were cubicle operators. Okay. When she came here, she saw that picture, and she told Steve Stowe, "That's me." Steve called me and said, "Ray, I found you a Calutron girl." I took her out to Y12, set her on a stool at those Calutrons, made her picture. She said, "Ray, I never did know what I was doing when I was working out here. Can you show me?" I said, "Yeah, wow, Gladys, I can great. show you." So I opened up one of the cabinets. I said, "Gladys, when you were adjusting those knobs, you were changing the value of a rheostat down here." She reached over and tapped me on the arm. She said, "Ray, I still don't know what I was doing, <laughs> <laughs> but I know if I had any bobby pins in my hair, they'd just go and go stick Is to the right? wall somewhere." Wow. Largest magnets in the world at the time That's would pull the bobby pins out of their hair. What a great history. <laughs> Let's take a break. All Let's right. take a break, uh, Brad. Look, we'll be back in a couple minutes.
Daniel Forrester has been recognized as one of East Tennessee's leading attorneys for nearly two decades. Civil disputes, criminal defense, divorces, and juvenile custody cases are all part of an impressive resume. Daniel's legal experience also includes representing clients in local, state, and federal courts. A husband and a father, Daniel is a Rule 31 certified mediator who has represented hundreds of families in Chancery Court. Call Daniel Forrester Law Office at 865-457-7900 for a free consultation. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine. And always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference. So we can all continue to move forward together. Let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. From Oak Ridge, Tennessee, IB3 Global Solutions conducts operations around the world to enhance the U.S. national security posture and minimize radiological and nuclear threats. IB3 Global Solutions, mission first. At Navarro, we partner with our clients to advance clean energy and deliver effective solutions for complex challenges in the nuclear and environmental fields. Fan Gear Barn is Oak Ridge's source for new and vintage sports fan gear from around the world of sports. Find your favorite team gear at Fan Gear Barn, located at 977 Oak Ridge Turnpike, across from the hospital. Open 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., six days a week. Closed on Sundays. I was just sitting there telling Ray that I owe an apology to all my science teachers over the last 20 years. I really didn't study hard enough. <laughs> I, I, I got my B's, but God, I mean, I just, uh, it gets away from me. It does. So we got, so we have Los Alamos, which is basically the brains in the assembly point. Yeah, they we got Oak Ridge out here doing a lot of, lot of labor, a lot of hard work at the plant. 60 cents of every dollar spent during the Manhattan Project was spent in Oak Ridge. Yeah, that makes sense. Bigger, yeah. more. Th- yeah. So there, then we got Hanford up here, right. which all I know about it is is that cleaning up Hanford is a lot more expensive than cleaning up everywhere yeah, else. I know budgets. Yeah, now. that's because of the plutonium. Oh. And that's, uh, oh, what? It, it's a huge area. Oh, there. it's uh, huge. You know, it's going to take them another half century to clean it up. I don't know how long. But what happened there? Is they we proved you could produce the the plutonium in a uranium reactor at the graphite reactor, sent a small amount out to Los Alamos, and they said, okay, we're going to need a lot. So they built huge, larger reactors along the Columbia River. They built sure. three, and then later on during the Cold War, they built three more. And all of the plutonium that we have uh, in nuclear weapons came from there. All of the highly enriched uranium that we have came from the K-25 gaseous diffusion process. Y-12 was what started it, but in by December of 1946, the gaseous diffusion process could produce weapons-grade uranium, so they didn't need the calutrons anymore. That's right. And it's a, it's a continuous operation. Operate it for a tenth what it cost to run Y-12. So they shut Y-12 down, started using K-25. Shut now they down kept, that, that area. Yeah, but now they kept two buildings, building 9731 and building 9204-3, beta 3, and those calutrons stayed active. Okay. In fact, the ones in, in 9731 operated up until 1974, separating all of the elements in the periodic table. Some of those isotopes went over to the graphite reactor and were made radioactive and produced nuclear medicine. Now, Alvin Weinberg, who was the director of the Oak Ridge National Laboratory for 15 years, yes. he was asked before he died, what's the most important thing Oak Ridge has done for the world? Without any hesitation, he said medical isotopes. That's yeah, so my dad. Helps millions of people yeah. every year. 
same science, same equipment that separated the uranium for Little Boy, first atomic bomb ever used in warfare, also separated those stable isotopes that went over and produced nuclear medicine. There's a big now, debate on whether we should export isotopes for medical use in the beginning. Remember, in the beginning, in the 50s, there, was, there, was, yeah, there was. They were there was. worried about them being exploited and yeah, stuff like but that. The, so Oppenheimer straightened them out on that. He did, so yeah, he did get involved in that. Then, of course, they came running at him too. <laughs> SEC. I mean, the, yeah. you know. Um, and I, I need to finish that. Beta three operated up until 1998, and there's still uh, Beta Calutrons still in that building now. And that's those two buildings are part of the Manhattan Project National Historical Park here in Oak Ridge. Next as week is the K25. Next week, issue. we're going to open a new cell. Oh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm talking about out at Y12, yeah. right? The big sale, the cleanup sale and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, NNS, uh, whoever's coming down. Uh, I'm sure Grant Home and everybody will come down. Yeah. So that's going to give us a, a, a give us an, a big deal and an opportunity mm -hmm. to start cleaning up and tearing down buildings at Y12 and, yeah. and ORNL. Yeah, there was nine large buildings that had 1,152 calories. Isn't, Isn't that something? Isn't that something? All batch processes. 22,482 people working out there in August of 1945. 22,000. I think they're yeah. down to, I mean, they're still got a lot of. Well, there's 8,000 people working yeah, out there. UPF's now drawing a lot for of the, people. For CNS, yeah. Is UPF. Mm -hmm. It'll replace a lot of stuff. Uh, it, it's a uranium processing facility. It'll replace that. what's being done in 9212. That's right. So the one building, pro which is a big Yeah, it's place. a big building. Yeah. So that's, I can, just from reading about it, I don't, yeah. I'm not out there, but I'm just reading about it. Mm -hmm. It provided a lot of history for us, a lot of support <laughs> yeah. for us. Did it? But let's go back to, so I'm I'm Oppenheimer. I'm sitting down here in Los Alamos, and I'm saying, yeah, yeah we got some more plutonium. <laughs> yeah. So Oak Ridge is shipping it to them. No, shipping <clears throat> uranium to them. Okay, no plutonium got well, shipped out Well, just here. a little bit. Okay, in the it, Just for lab purposes. Hanford shipping the other. Yeah, Hanford shipped the large quantity of plutonium down to Los Alamos. And when did, um, and you know when they talk in the movie, it's almost like they're, they're totally focused on the plutonium bomb. It's yes. like there's no. Well, they, you have to understand, they knew that little boy would work. They didn't need to test it. It's just a little uranium here, a little uranium here, a gun barrel between them, Boom. and you just push yeah. them together. And they knew when you get enough of it in one place, it'll work. It, but it, now when they tried to do that with plutonium, it, it did not work. It couldn't make the trip. It would go off too soon that's before right. it got there. So that's when they went to the implosion design. Yeah. And that brought on a whole lot more discussion. 32 explosions have to implode simultaneously. The movie did a good job with that. It did. It and they had to it. test that just to know it would happen. And they and were they were they confident but not totally uh, confident. <laughs> one guy was confident. Yeah, he had the, the rest $10. Of them didn't he, know. <laughs> he got the he got the whatever he got. Yeah, he won ten dollars out of that bit. Yeah. Yeah, but I, now the Oppenheimer movie really does do a good job. It's about like Oppenheimer. It. It's yeah. not about it's the atomic bomb, yeah. but it's it's about Oppenheimer. And you know, old uh, Robert Downey Jr. He he's a doing job, a good man. job on Louis Strauss. He's going to get a supporting actor award, I think, for that. And he made the comment. Now remember, he's Iron Man, so mm -hmm. he's he's a big movie uh, actor. But he made the comment: "This is the best movie he's ever been in." That's a uh, it's the most compliment. important movie. Well, it is. I it's think the most it's important. really important. How many movie. people were working at Hanford? Because it's kind of the mystery place. Because well, yeah, I, I don't. War. I, I'm not up on that enough to know how many people were up there. But remember, there were three nuclear reactors, and uh, they were processing for that. I, I'd be afraid yeah. to put a number on it. Less there than were, Oak Ridge. Or yeah, they were about, yeah, Oak, yeah, it wasn't nearly as much as Oak Ridge. Remember, 60 cents of every dollar spent here. So we had a lot more people here than they did at either of the other two sites. Yeah. I believe at Los Alamos you're talking three to 4,000 people. Mm -hmm. And up there, I'd be afraid to put a number on it because I just don't yeah. know. But it would have been a small number. Did Oak Ridgers in 43 and 44, and I, I guess they did because my dad uh, told me a lot, but for, did they have the kind of social city life, oh, yeah. community life? I mean, that come they on, they danced did, on the tennis courts. Yeah, he didn't dance <laughs> yeah. on the tennis courts. And uh, Oak Ridge was a 24-hour a day city at now. that time. Seven it was days going a week. Seven days a week, all the time. And, uh, and yes, just like wanting the best schools, they also built a number of theaters and had movies brought in, and I mean, they, they were trying to keep, people keep the people happy and keep them here and keep them working. Now, I got the impression from the movie that Groves and Oppenheimer didn't let anybody leave. 
I mean, maybe laborers they did, but <laughs> yeah. I got the impression. No, the tellers trying to leave, and everybody's you ain't going anywhere. Yeah, no, and they talk about that, but people could come and go. Yeah. And, uh, and same thing here in Oak Ridge. I mean, we had people coming in to work every day on buses, so, you know, we're bringing people in. But they're going through a gate. Yeah, yeah, they would. So I guess it had to be yeah. pretty important to be. You know, <laughs> Richard Feynman's my my favorite scientist. Mm -hmm. Out at Los Alamos, he found a hole in the fence. He would go through the hole and come around and come in the gate, and they'd check him in. He'd go through the hole and come around and come in the gate again. Took him a little while to figure out the same man was coming in and out. There's always one in there. There's always one. Feynman was a good one. <laughs> I mean, hey, going back to personality for a second, mm -hmm. we covered some science. You know, I, I, I keep watching Oppenheimer and reading and looking at different things. This guy is Bob Dylan 20 years earlier. I mean, the looks, the attitude, the I've Eastern never thought philosophy. Of it that way. But I'm looking and I'm thinking, this is Bob Dylan in, you know, in the 30s and Bob was oh. in the 60s. But, this is, but yeah, he looks like him. It's the same story. Midwestern guy. He's a New Yorker, but I, I've you know, never. I mean, he's free thinking. He had that kind of creative mode to him, you know. Uh, he, he never. He always was outside the box. Oppenheimer was brilliant. Remember, he's oh, yeah. the one that talked about black holes before we ever knew what they really were. So he had about the, everything collapsing on it. Yeah, so remember, I'm yeah. not a science guy. But yeah, I understand. So that, that's a uh, that's interesting. So he was very smart, very intelligent. He and, could. Uh, well, he, he he thought outside the box. Too. He did, and but that's he why he also, never got a Nobel Prize. He wouldn't finish the math. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't do true. the work. Yeah, probably true. He went on to the next thing, didn't he? Yeah. But he deserved one. But but he got treated really bad. I mean, there was a period of time about eight years there. Uh, it was bad. They uh, mistreated him, and I'm glad that the Department of Energy actually vacated that decision. Yeah, that just last December. December yeah, yeah. I'm we glad the, to and see I that. And I give credit to that because I think and, and the Oppenheimer movie shows the corruptness associated with that. Oh, it was Strauss and process, and it was just well, it ain't changed much. Right. I mean, I, that's I, how I we do you, business. No, know, I'll tell you, I don't know how Oppenheimer did what he did. Now, remember, they've got the full text from that, that hearing, so they know what was said, and it's all published now. It's been declassified. And the fact that he took all of that and, you know, only one comment, when will anybody ever tell the truth? Yeah. And nobody ever did. And I yeah. believe I'd, I'd have pitched a fit. I'd have done something. I think his I wife was what? his wife was a little bit upset. Kitty with was ready to when take him out, back, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but he always carried himself kind of. He did. In, yeah. a, in, a, in, a, in, a, mm. in a in an upper. He just had that. I don't know what what you would call it. So, tell us a little bit about because I mean this is beyond a little bit behind the beyond the Manhattan Project. Um, how does a city of 50, 50 to 60,000 survive in a state of 3 million or 2 million? Did everybody in Tennessee know something was going on? <laughs> no. I, mean, I mean, there's a little secret of things a little bit. Well, now, you remember, Oak Ridge was behind gates on all the seven entrances to the, the city. The workers are going out. They're yeah, talking yeah they were going in and out. But now it was a gated city for seven years, from 42 to 49. In March of 49, they right. opened the gates on the main roads. Mm -hmm. That's when they built these three gatehouses that we have now. And they were to isolate the graphite reactor, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, at the time, pretty soon after that in 48. And the uh, Y-12, the one over on Scarborough Road is Y-12, one down on the turnpike was to isolate K-25. And now they only operated those until uh, 1953. Then they moved it back to the locations where they are now. But the people uh, could come in then. Up until then, yeah, people knew Oak Ridge was here. They knew something was going on. Sure. Let me, let me tell you a story about the yeah. 43 Club. 43 Club, no that, was club. For people, that was formed after the Manhattan Project for people who were here in 1943. Sure. At the second meeting, a man held his hand up at the end of the meeting and said, I'd like to ask a question. He said, all right. He said, I had to keep a stack of a blank three by five cards in my pocket all the time. And if I heard anybody talking about the project, I had to write down what I heard, had to put it in an envelope and send it to the Acme Finance Company. <clears throat> if I didn't hear anything at the end of the week, I had to send a blank card in. I wonder if anybody else had to do that. About half the people in the room held their hand up. Wow. So they were spying on one another, if yeah. you know what I mean. If yeah. anybody talked during the Manhattan Project now, mm -hmm. before they dropped a the bomb, they didn't. nobody knew what they were doing. Right. 
out of the people working at Y-12, 100 of them probably would have yeah. known. The yeah. chemists would have Same known. Same with the r &L. Yeah, yeah. They, they would have known they were working with uranium, but they wouldn't have known they were making a bomb. That's right. They just knew they were Suspicion. working with Suspicion. In the middle of the war, you yeah. know. Yeah. But they so, yeah, out. people in Oak Ridge went, uh, but they, I think they tried to keep the people at Los Alamos more contained. I believe that. I, I don't, I can't prove it. Was, well, and their work was less manufacturing and oh, more yeah, yeah. Uh, this, engineering. And a lot of what was going on here uh, was just routine labor work. That's I right. I mean, building, construction, and uh, so people could come and go. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um, well, I think, Orn, what was Ornell's role at that time? At that time, the graphite reactor right. is what they had. Now, what about the uh, swimming pool what, reactor? Uh, yeah, now that was later. They uh, built 13 uh, reactors out there over I remember time. as a kid, my dad took me and I stood yeah, over you the can swimming see pool it. reactor. Yeah. Yeah, I got well, you know, it. William Pollard is the reason we have the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. He took, from, he's a University of Tennessee professor, mm -hmm. and he got 14 southern universities to get to co collaborate with him, and they put political pressure on the system to make the Oak Ridge National Laboratory into an Oak Ridge National Laboratory. At the time, it was just the graphite reactor. And they were building national labs in New York City, in California, Chicago. In but response in, to all the science. Yeah, 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 but down in the South, it was a little bit harder to get that, but he was able to do it. And out of that became Orange, and then ORAU, Oak Ridge Associated Universities, right. is what Pollard started. And, and it was to help people get access to that science that was being done around the graphite reactor. You know, and it still now, goes course, on somewhat. Oh, yeah, it does. Around, now they, yeah, they, they put they, universities for rise, 200 right, universities. Absolutely. And, and they've got the uh, high flux isotope reactor now, and, uh, and the Spallation neutron source. But you think you think in your mind, now this is a citizen, not a scientist, and my father and everything, but the ORNL was the research lab, it's yeah. it's it's the it's the elite, it's the it's all that Country kind of club. Why, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. And, no, what, my, I'm and, and no, but then they I grew up around it. Yeah. And uh, I mean I understand what you're saying, and Y twelve was the factory. Yes. You know. Production factory. They, they build the bombs and yeah. they figure out if they work or not. But I mean that was kinda I always thought that was unfair to Y twelve uh, stuff. But that's well, again, I, I had 47 years at Y-12. I wouldn't take anything from my experience out yeah. there. Wonderful people, yeah. highly patriotic people. Oh, yeah. And I'm telling you that we're doing an important work. You have to remember now, it's been 80 years. And there's not been another worldwide. You conflict. know, that's what you get when you, that's what you get that's when it. you look at the movie. Yeah. He talks about well, we, we have two choices, but it's been 80 years. Nobody's used a bomb. Well, it's unthinkable. You that's understand? what my dad said. It's you people talk you about limited to, nuclear yeah, war. No. You don't know what you're you don't talking, know what about. You're talking about. He said this is kind of and then, <laughs> yeah. and then Teller built his bombs and uh -huh. and, and now they just got to hundred times. Megaton. Yeah, yeah, you drop them in downtown Knoxville, it melts everybody from Oak Ridge <laughs> to Rockwoods. You know, but in those days, those bombs yeah, on Hiroshima what, and stuff were a mile wide. Yeah, that's small. what I told the television when they interviewed me. If I, what would I think if a nuclear? I got a word that a nuclear weapon was coming toward a nuclear missile. So, you know, like they did in Hawaii, false yeah. report. Yeah. I said, oh, <laughs> I'd just kiss this old world goodbye. I'm going to be it. vaporized in a few minutes. Yeah. Now, they didn't put that on television. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, though. I mean, that's it. But I mean, that's it. We're in those days, if you weren't in near the center, it was a mile. You only went a mile out in the radiation. You, you, want to be, you don't want to be downwind. You don't want, we don't want anybody to ever use a nuclear weapon. It's crazy. Now they're right. building tactical. tactical ticks, they're making ones that are smaller and don't do as much damage. Yeah, remember now, we haven't made a new nuclear weapon since uh, 1990. Okay. Uh, we still have an active stockpile, of course, and we are storing all of the highly enriched uranium that's in, uh, it, not in a nuclear weapon or the Navy's uh, ships and sure. submarines or in a research reactor. All that's stored at Y-12. And that provides a great service. Absolutely. But we'll, we'll talk when we get back. One yeah. last break, guys. Let's take two minutes, Chandler. Daniel Forrester has been recognized as one of East Tennessee's leading attorneys for nearly two decades. Civil disputes, criminal defense, divorces, and juvenile custody cases are all part of an impressive resume. Daniel's legal experience also includes representing clients in local, state, and federal courts. A husband and a father, Daniel is a Rule 31 certified mediator who has represented hundreds of families in Chancery Court. Call Daniel Forrester Law Office at 865-457-7900 for a free consultation. 
From Oak Ridge, Tennessee, IB3 Global Solutions conducts operations around the world to enhance the U.S. national security posture and minimize radiological and nuclear threats. IB3 Global Solutions. Mission first. Fan Gear Barn is Oak Ridge's source for new and vintage sports fan gear from around the world of sports. Find your favorite team gear at Fan Gear Barn, located at 977 Oak Ridge Turnpike, across from the hospital. Open 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., six days a week. Closed on Sundays. At Navarro, we partner with our clients to advance clean energy and deliver effective solutions for complex challenges in the nuclear and environmental fields. When should you get tested for COVID-19? You have symptoms of COVID-19, such as runny nose, congestion, sore throat, fever, cough, shortness of breath, muscle pain, headache, chills, or loss of taste or smell. Current testing recommendations say everyone should get tested immediately if they have symptoms of COVID-19. If you have symptoms, be sure to follow recommendations about how long to stay home and away from others. For more information, visit our If You Are Sick or Test Positive webpage. All right, crew, let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Before we go any further, I want to thank our sponsors. We've got a lot of them. Attorney Daniel Forrester running for chancellor. He's pretty obvious in the background here. We also have Navarro's helped us. You know these people. And IB3 with Sean Gleason's been on it. We give uh, the utility district does a great job supporting shows and people around the community. And so we've just got a fan gear located across from the hospital. It's got all kinds of sports gear. So we deeply appreciate all your support and especially our platinum sponsor, Daniel Forrester. Um, Oak Ridge benefited a lot, you know, mm -hmm. from the history and the people we came. Because I was, you know, I was born in 55, so I was right in the cusp of all mm -hmm. those people having children. I mean, I think some of the valuable things we learned. Uh, Gene Kimmelman was my age, and he played baseball. And to hear Myra come every once or twice, every couple of years, and talk about her experiences. Mm -hmm. And just so many top-end people. I was telling you earlier, you know, Alvin Weinberg lived right below Cedar Hill. Bill Ergen lived over on Orkney. He was, helped mm -hmm. develop at Princeton the um, uh, it was, it was stealth, the stealth radar stuff in the late 40s, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Then you go right down the hill, and there's Lillian Russell. And we got, you know, we had so many people come and have children. Not a lot stayed, as, yeah. but you never do. Talent runs yeah. where it has to go. That's right. But Oak Ridge is a town it is, education and everything, because of the Manhattan Project. Absolutely. It started during the Manhattan Project. And if you really think about it, yes, it was important to get that bomb in that war. But the things that have come out of the Manhattan Project, I mean things as simple as a touch screen on your iPhone was invented here in Oak Ridge. Yep. The Spallation neutron source, most powerful neutron source in the world, doing experiments that couldn't be done otherwise. Mm -hmm. And the Frontier computer, fastest, most powerful supercomputer in the world. Mm -hmm. And of course at Y-12, we built the moon box for the Apollo program to bring the lunar material back. Right. And Warren Ells producing the uh, plutonium 239 that's powering our spacecraft that mm -hmm. are going into outer space. So Oak Ridge has touched the world, not only nuclear medicine, major. Matter of fact, there are small modular nuclear reactors going yep. to be built here right away. Yeah, it's going to be in the future. And Oak Ridge is growing. I mean, we're at 32,000 now and increasing. Houses are being built. Uh, I think Oak Ridge is thriving and, and is doing so because of the science. I mean, when the governor put in place the Nuclear uh, Energy Council, and I don't have the names right, I'm sure. I got them. <laughs> but several, several people here in Oak Ridge yeah. are involved in that. Yes, they are. So I think Oak Ridge is 
contributed significantly to many things that we take just take for granted. But they've also, I mean, come on, when they were talking about the COVID vaccine, Oak Ridge was involved in that. Climate well, the change, supercomputer Oak Ridge helped a lot. Isolated. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, I mean, we're doing things that uh, that are beneficial mm -hmm. to everybody in the world. Right, there's no question. And, I, and you know, if you're young enough, if you've lived here long enough, you remember when there was a, a Linden and a Willowbrook and a Cedar Hill and a Pine Valley and, mm -hmm. and a Woodland and a Glenwood. I think I got them all. But anyway, and today some of those still survive. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, Woodland's still going, been remodeled. Yeah. But all those neighborhoods, we had that. We go, in yeah. summer, we come together. It was just we had this identity that mm -hmm. is really unique to the city of Oak Ridge because of all we've accomplished. Yeah, absolutely. And, and back to the Oppenheimer movie, I think it is going to bring attention to Oak Ridge. Now, obviously, it's, Oak Ridge is only mentioned three times in the movie, and there's no footage of Oak Ridge. But we are associated with the atomic age, with the nuclear age, and I think uh, that we'll see increase in tourism. I mean... Katie Watt at uh, Explore Oak Ridge rented three theaters and we filled them up two weeks before yeah. we had the show. So it's getting a lot of attention and I, and I think Oak Ridge will benefit from that. Well, and I think with the worldwide tensions with Iran and uh, Russia and other yeah. things, Y 12 especially and with. with An important role. Oh, Very I mean, important. you know. But we talked in the break, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to bring on two things. One, we're going to talk about, you know, Oppenheimer said it could do one of two things. It could set the world on fire. It could stop war, this kind of war forever. And to be fair, we haven't had any nuclear, we haven't had any bombs exploded in 80 right. years yeah. since Nagasaki. So the standoff came true. I mean, I mean, a number of people have it, and now they're trying to figure out a way to do tactical and smaller, which is yeah. more insane to me. But <laughs> the goal of the, we haven't had a major conflict, have I mean, a worldwide conflict in 80 years. Not that That's there hasn't good. been terrible wars, but right. 80 years we haven't but had. But the number of people killed in the war, 60 million in World War II. That's unbelievable. And you haven't had anything like that. Since. Nothing like it. It's exactly right. I want to talk about also, I want to talk about energy. Yeah. We, we joke about the French, and we talk about the French, and we joke about French are passive and the French are tolerant the French don't stand up and all this and obviously I come from a French family but the bottom line is is that they do all this but the French are smart enough to, <laughs> to they're smart enough call my green they're smart enough to heat their country and cool the country with 86 percent of it with nuclear energy the yeah. only country in the world well eventually it. we're going that way I hope these so. small small modular reactors will be demonstrations and uh, they will prove that that's the most effective way uh, to produce energy in the future. I was 24 years old in graduate school during Three Mile Island, but, you know, and all this other stuff, but there's never been a major nuclear disaster. Chernobyl obviously was major, but that's just improper safety protocols. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. You know, but I mean, the bottom line is... But the ones that are being built, they are inherently safe. Yeah. And that's, that's the good thing. Yeah, and, and it's, it's just been... I just, I come back to the Manhattan Project. Started it all. Didn't made it? us all have a role that was, you yeah, know, and tremendous. I've said it before. My father died at 61 of an enlarged heart. He, he spent all of his 40s and 50s with raised expectations. Uh, Bill Oregon, I mentioned, uh, my neighbor died of a heart attack at 50-something. There were casualties from the Manhattan Project, wouldn't you say? I mean, realistically, there were people that, that gave up a lot. Yeah, well, you know, the Department of Labor has a program that will provide support, yeah. medical support, to anyone that has certain types of cancer yeah, and known done, to be yeah, produced by the materials being worked Yeah, it's all around. correlated. They have a formula yeah, for not, it. Not, but I just think we know, and we, 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 you know, I just appreciate their service. And yeah, I do. And there's Absolutely. something there that on the front lines in 43, 44, that was dangerous work. <laughs> and they knew they had to get it done. They did, and they succeeded. That's it. And nobody knows more about it than Ray Smith. Oh, I'm just going to go on the record Thank again you. and say that Ray has studied it and represented it. And, and not just your studies and your work as historian, but 47 years you learn a lot. People, <laughs> people ask me questions, why do you know about yeah. this and that? I said, I lived through most of it. Yeah. My son will ask me about the, you know, whether it's the Kennedy assassination or Watergate. We went through all that. Yeah. We, you know, we've lived so long, we're useful. Yep. That's what I tell my son. <laughs> I'm, a good way to put it. I'm almost useful, not really, but I'm. A, we have our 50th high school graduation reunion this year. Seems that? amazing here in town. Yeah. A lot of.
lot of children of the uh, of the Adam in that one. I mean, there's a right. lot of people that mentioned Gene, some others. You yeah. know, we still have a, we had a graduating class of almost 600. How so about in three years we had we had 1,900 kids yeah. in three classes. Uh, it's quickly, I want to say, Benita Albert is writing about people that graduate from high school in my historically speaking mm -hmm. hall that have made impact on the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, just think about artificial intelligence. Sure. That's something that's coming. Kai Fu Lee is a world sure. authority on it. Comes right out of Oak Ridge. Benita's done a great job for the community. Oh, Benita is. She's a wonderful person. Oh, there's just so many people that have yeah. done a lot. We've got 30 seconds left. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I was really looking forward to the show, and it didn't disappoint. Um, which, let's just remember our heritage. Let's remember what's out there. Go see Oppenheimer. It's three hours long, but it's good. It's and fast. It really paced. looks at everything. Really good. It's really good. It covers a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. Like. It does. Okay. Well, thank you. And we'll be back next week, 7 o'clock. Thank everybody for watching.